Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Let me begin this morning this way. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and assume among the powers of earth the separate but equal stations to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impelled them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so begins the preamble to the Declaration of Independence written by 33-year-old Thomas Jefferson. All of Congress unanimously immediately signed it on July the 4th, 1776, what we now refer to as, as Independence Day. But our freedom would not come for eight years, four months, 15 days, and 28,000 lives later. 28,000 lives later. 244 years ago, that was 1.7% of the population of the United States. Today, 1.7% of the population of the United States is 5,576,000 people. That'd be the equivalent today. I want to tell you something. Freedom's never been free. It's never even been cheap. Freedom has always been very expensive. So, that's what we're going to talk about this morning is the price of freedom. Freedom has a price at every level. We're going to begin this morning in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13. Submit to every human institution because of the Lord. Why? Because of the Lord. Whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors as those sent out by him to punish those who do evil and Praise those who do good. For it is God's will that you, by doing good, silence the ignorance of foolish people. As God's slaves, which we all confess to be, as God's slaves, live as free people, but don't use your freedom as a way to conceal evil. It should be a headline in the newspapers. Amen. Honor everyone love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. So this morning, let's talk about the price of freedom, freedom that we enjoy and very much take for granted. Let's begin with this, the price of civil freedom. Civil freedom has a price. We're talking here about the freedoms we enjoy within the parameters of civilization. Here in our passage, Peter makes reference in verse 14 to governors as those sent out by him or the emperor or the one in charge to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. Now, Peter's talking there about a particular group of people. He's talking about those who enforce the laws established by those in authority. Today, that would be judges, prosecutors, and police, right? What we refer to collectively as law enforcement officers. So, listen, the price of civil freedom, 
which we all enjoy, the price of civil freedom is law enforcement officers. That's the price we pay for civil freedom. As a civilization, we train them, we elect them, we hire them, we empower them, we put them to work, enforcing our laws. And verse 13 says, we are to submit to them. Right? Who is? All of us are. We're all to submit to our law enforcement structure. There are many today, especially today, who would ask the question, why? Why are we to submit to law enforcement? Why are we to submit to law enforcement officers? If I don't like the way they behave, why should I submit to law enforcement? If I believe they're taking advantage of their authority, why should I submit to law enforcement. If in my opinion, in my opinion, if in my opinion I believe they're being prejudicial, why should I submit to law enforcement? Why should I? Well, we identify two reasons here this morning. First, because here in Scripture, chapter 2, verse 13, God commands it, right? And that should be enough. You at home, isn't that enough? God commands it, isn't that enough? Do we need more than that? We've got to get out of this habit of demanding that God always explain himself to us. Yeah, we, we've, got to get, we've got to get beyond this, that God always needs to make sense to us. Do you know why God doesn't need to make sense to us? Because God is God and we're not. God's brain is bigger than, as, as the universe, and our brains weigh 3.3 pounds. And we only use 10% of our brains, which means we're comparing God's brain as big as the universe to ours, which is like five ounces. You've got to be kidding me, God. We're going to do what you tell us. Just tell us what to do, and we'll do it. And those who don't do it, Scripture says, what, are wrong. They're wrong. The second reason we're to submit to law enforcement is because, come on, that's the price we pay for civil freedom. All freedom has a price. Without submitting to law enforcement officers, we would quickly lose our civil freedoms and slip directly into civil anarchy. You know what? This is not a secret. Libraries are full of books documenting in the past how people, how civilizations have slid into mindless, murderous anarchy because they refused to follow the direction, the instruction of law enforcement. Those same books are available to us today. They're available to us today, and if we ignore history, we're doomed to repeat it. And I'm telling you, that's just foolishness. It's, it's foolishness. And to those who say, but, 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 there is no but. God commands it. We do what God says, whether we understand it or not, whether we agree with it or not. There is no but. God commands it. Amen. James Kelly, serving 10 years in a prison sentence in Florida for identity theft, but he's blaming and suing Verizon for this crime. Suing them for $72 million. This man has a rap sheet dating all the way back to 1985. But he claims the Verizon sales rep should have realized he was not who he was claiming to be. That's Verizon's fault. The rep should have known better than to allow Kelly to get away with his crime. He claims the sales rep's failure to stop him has cost him, Kelly, and I quote, the loss of a decade of civil liberties and freedom. 
It's somebody else's fault when I commit a crime and get caught doing it and get punished for it. It's not our fault. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Listen, civil freedom has a price. If you want civil freedom, you have to pay something for it. The price for civil freedom is submission to the law and to law enforcement officers that enforce the law. Thank you, brother, back there against that back wall. He's watching over us here this morning, and that's a small price to pay for civil freedom. Amen. Right? Amen. Right? Amen. Those of you out there on your couch, I'm talking about the price of freedom. Here's another thing, the price of national freedom. We have to pay a price for the freedom we enjoy as a nation. Let me give you a hint. The price of national freedom is human lives. That's how much freedom costs. We pay for national freedom with human lives. It began with the payment of 28,000 lives to gain our national freedom. And since then, in wars all over the world, a payment of well over 600,000 lives has been spent keeping our national freedom. 600,000 American lives. Like many of you, I laid my life on the line for our national freedom. And I got to tell you, it really bothers me when anyone, even, even those of us who wore the uniform, because I've heard those uh, who, who have worn the uniform say that certain lives died in vain because the speaker didn't agree with the cause of the war, the conflict, or the battle was not won, or something else. No life given for freedom has ever been given in vain. Amen. I've struggled some, just to confess to you, how best to couch this. And, and and this is how I want to couch it, and I, and I hope I'm able to say what I want to say. I've raised two sons. They're grown men now. But when they were growing up, I was a bit of an authoritarian, I guess. They turned out okay, so I guess it was all right. But if they were disobeying or if they were messing around or if they were doing something they shouldn't do, I gave them a certain look. And now, here we are today, one's 45, one's 50, and they still refer to that as the look. Dad gave me the look. I can't imitate it. I don't, I don't feel it, so I can't give it right now. <laughs> when we were here in view of a call years ago, we were over there. We met at that time in what is now the, the Youth Center. We were over there, and I was up on the stage waiting to be introduced. Linda and the boys were sitting down here on the uh, front pew. One was... Uh, a sophomore in high school, the other one was a freshman in college, sitting with their mom. And I'm waiting to be introduced. And I just happened to glance down there at them. Both the boys were chewing gum. And I thought, oh, no. This is not going to happen. And so I waited until the attention was off me and I turned to them and I gave them the look. You know. <laughs> both these big strapping, both of them are bigger than me. Both of them in that instant swallowed their gum 
and looked at me like a couple of third graders who were in trouble. I never had to do anything to them. I never had to say anything to them. I never had to lay a hand on them. I just gave them <clears throat> the look. Now, here's what I want to say. Through many conflicts all over the world, some big, some small, some long, some short, through many conflicts all over the world, We've sent our guys and now women in uniform. Some of them paid deep prices and wounds. Some of them gave up their lives. All of them, all of them shoring up this posture of the United States that, that in the world says, <clears throat> No. Stop that. Let go. Back up. You go home. And so far, that posture has been so awesome, so overwhelming, so convincing in this world that those to whom we give that posture <clears throat> have run off and gone home and given up. And I want to say to you, anyone who has contributed to that posture here that our nation projects, anyone who has by wound or by life or by service Given that posture, you have not served in vain. They have not given their lives in vain. Those lives, those wounds, those sacrifices were given gaining and earning our national freedom. And I praise God for them. We don't have to do anything now as a nation. We just have to say, back up, let go, get out of here, go home. And our enemies run curtails back to where they came from. Get back in my notes now. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 and 4. Everyone must submit to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist are instituted by God. For government is God's servant to you for good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. Because it does not carry the sword for no reason. For government is God's servant, an avenger that brings wrath on the one who does wrong. And those who serve in the military who help project that posture of wrath to the world gains national freedom for us. Way to go, guys. Way to go. By the way, some of you have asked me about this bracelet that I wear. It's not a gay rights bracelet. It's not a rainbow. These are the colors of Vietnam service. The white represents all the boys, and we were boys who made it back, and the black represents all the boys who did not make it back. Many other in our congregation wear these bracelets. Many watching there at home or smiling now because you guys wear the bracelets too. I am so very proud to be a military veteran in this church. And I am proud of those of you who are military veterans. Our national freedom is because of the sacrifice you've made. Thank you. One last thing. The price of eternal, eternal freedom. There's a freedom beyond civil laws. There's a freedom above national security. There's a freedom that outlives life and transcends death. There's a freedom that no human can attain on his or her own. There's a freedom that glimmers faintly deep in the heart of all men. There's a freedom that cannot be earned or achieved and can only be given to man as a gift. There's a freedom that can only be given by the man God. It's a freedom that must be given because its price is far too great for anyone but him 
to pay. It's the freedom that can only be purchased with holy, eternal, sinless blood. It's a freedom that was gained on a cross 2,000 years ago and is still available today. It's a freedom that was gained by blood, blood of the God-man, earned by him, not by us, and offered to him, offered us as a gift by him still today. It's a gift that's often ignored, often overlooked. It's a gift that's not assumed, uh, not assured to anyone other than those who turn to him and cry out in forgiveness. This is a freedom that all long for and few claim because they will not turn to and receive the gift of the God-man, Jesus Christ. Eternal freedom. The price of eternal freedom can only be paid by Jesus. He says in John 8, 36, if the Son set you free, mm, you really will be free. Let me read that again. If the Son sets you free, you really will be free. You really will be free. There's a poem that I normally say for special occasions. I don't know the author. I've had this poem for a long time. It's spoken by the one who has found eternal freedom to those who are still waiting to be set free. Let me just read it to you. When tomorrow starts without me and I'm not there for you to see, if the sun should rise and find that I have finally been set free, I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you do today while thinking of the many things we didn't get to say. I know how much you love me, as much as I love you. And each time that you think of me, please know I'm thinking of you. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that Jesus came and called my name and took me by the hand and said my place was ready in heaven far above. And then I'd have to leave behind all those I dearly love. But as I turned to walk away, a tear fell from my eye. For all my life, I'd always thought I didn't want to die. I had too much to live for, so much left yet to do. It seemed almost impossible that I was leaving you. I thought of all the yesterdays, the good ones and the bad. I thought of all the love we shared and all the fun we had. But when I walked through heaven's gates, I felt so much at home. When God looked down and smiled at me from his great golden throne, he said, this is eternity and all I've promised you. Today your life on earth is past and here life starts anew. All your sins have been forgiven and now at last you're free. So won't you come and take my hand and share my life with me? So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think I'm far away. I'm here in the city of heaven where we'll be free together one day. You know what? The realization of eternal freedom should so permeate our lives, it should so permeate our souls, it should so engulf our hearts, it should so dominate our thinking and our vision and our days that we should be able to live through our lives. Civil freedom, yes, national freedom, great, but we should be so conscious of our eternal freedom that we ought to walk with a spring in our step, coronavirus or not. Amen. Riots or not. Persecution or not, those of us who've gained eternal freedom by turning to Christ Jesus and crying out for him for forgiveness because of the blood he shed on the cross, we ought to be above all men most enjoyably, victoriously free. Eternal freedom today. Do you have it? Do you have it there at home? Do you have this eternal freedom? You're sitting there thinking, I don't know whether I do or not. Listen, you can have it. Jesus already paid for it, still making it available, even today, if you'll just claim it. You want to pray with me? 
Will you just sit up there? Will you just sit on the edge of your couch? Will you sit up on the edge of your chair? Will you just pray with me? Will you pray this prayer with me? Let's all pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for providing freedom for us here in our civilization. We thank you for America. Thank you for providing us national freedom for all those young men and women who have paid the ultimate price gaining our national freedom. Lord Jesus, thank you for eternal freedom. And I want to claim it right now. Now you just repeat after me there at home. Bow your head. Bow your head. Close your eyes. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I have sinned. And I am so very sorry. Please forgive me. As best I know how, I'm going to follow and live for you for the rest of my life. Thank you for loving me. And thank you for saving me. Amen. On this day when we're celebrating freedom, friend, you claim it. It's yours to claim. The freedom for eternity is yours to claim. If you would just claim it and follow Jesus, will you do that? Do that today. Will you do that today? On this day when we celebrate freedom, do that today. We're going to close now. Let's all stand together as we sing.